This is The Real Hustle on Holiday. In this series, Alex, Jess and Paul expose to our hidden cameras the scams that cheat tourists and travellers out of their hard-earned holiday money. On tonight's show, Paul takes some tourists for a ride. All done? You certainly have to. DJ Toby Anstis gets a good panning. It's so annoying these days. It is. And the hustlers demonstrate how to ruin a good night out. I feel devastated. <laughs> All the people on this show have been hustled for real. And after being given their money back, they agreed that the footage could be shown so you can avoid being ripped off by the same scams. It's market day in the holiday town of Fuengarola in Spain. Tourists and locals are out to soak up the sun and find a bargain or two. But on this particular morning, there's one extra bric-a-brac stall in the market set up by Alex and Jess. They're here to make a quick buck in the wrap-up. There's plenty of interest in the hustler's stall, especially their authentic hand-woven carpets. The whole group of you guys. A girl's holiday. Yeah. Oh. oh, is it? And we can. Who's oh. getting married? Oh, hey, congratulations. Cool. <laughs> get a little bit. Get that little get one. This? You can't get that. That one. Where there's a hen party, there's usually money. I tell you what, if, if, you, if you buy a big one, I'll throw this one in. As a wedding gift. Alex goes for the hard sell. Two for the price of one and a half. No. Uh, How much uh, is the big one? As a wedding gift. This one is uh, 70 euros, because it's actually from around here. I reckon we should all do it again. <laughs> but of course, yeah. of course you're welcome to try your skills at Hagley. 30. Oh, you're a good. <laughs> oh, that's good, I like it. 30. No, all right, 50. 35. <laughs> These girls are determined not to be ripped off. <laughs> this one's 120. <laughs> Everything's negotiable. <laughs> In fact, haggling seems to be the order of the day. Let's take 70. How much? <laughs> Is this tourist trying to hustle the hustlers? It's a valiant effort. Um, OK, 100. Alex isn't going to let her walk all over him like a cheap rug. Nine to five and you've got yourself a deal. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> These marks have done well. They've knocked 25 euros off and settled for a price of 95. What a great bargain. You have the last of our money. Oh, I like that. <laughs> the hustlers seem to be in a generous mood today. 40. 40. All right. 40. Alex has just made their day. That's a 70 euro carpet for almost half price. You get the little one thrown in from us. And he even throws in the miniature rug as a wedding present. Thank you. Thank you. But his customer service doesn't end there. I'll tell you what, I'll wrap it up for you so you can take it back. You come back in about 10 minutes? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Cool. Do you want us to wrap it for you? Yes, please. All right. Give us 10 minutes and we'll wrap it nice and tight so it doesn't get ripped or come apart. Okay. Yeah? yeah. Alex want... offers a wrapping service so that his happy customers can carry their rugs straight onto the return flights to the UK. Having paid, the marks explore the market while Alex gets wrapping. It's not long before the carpets are ready to pick up. The marks are just in time to see Alex putting the last piece of wrapping tape on their package. Hiya. So, I've wrapped the smaller one inside. Okay, great. Yeah. There you go. You've got a little handle. Oh. Oh, 
Hello. Just um, put the little handle on for you. Yeah. I'm just going to close that up here. Scissors. There you go. Thank you very Enjoy. much. Enjoy. Thank you. Take care. Thank Have you. a good Bye. holiday. Everyone's happy. The hustlers have their money, the marks have their packages. But they've actually been stitched up good and proper, as they're about to find out. Most tourists would leave their carpets wrapped until they got home. But we asked the marks to open theirs straight away. No, it's definitely your rug. Been hurt. Oh, no, that's a different rug. Yeah, that is that's a not the same rug, isn't it? Yeah. Why? Yeah. <laughs> They've just spent their hard-earned euros on a cheap children's play mat. Hopscotch. Is it? But we hadn't even wrapped that till we got back to my house. Well, I don't know. I'd have cried. Yeah, quite possibly. That was the last of my money. I would gain demand my money back. So how were they fooled? Simple. When Alex showed each monk the open end of their package, what they actually saw was an offcut from another carpet, hiding the garish pink one underneath. And they wouldn't have discovered they'd been conned until it was too late to do anything about it. By which time, both the market and the hustlers would be long gone. You should never let anything out of your sight if you're having it wrapped up. And remember that if you do buy something from a market stall on holiday, you've got absolutely no chance of getting your money back if you are unhappy with your purchase. If you're planning a holiday this year and don't want to run into any hustlers, here are some helpful tips to get you on your way. When traveling abroad, one of the things you'll be dealing with is foreign currency. And this is one of the main things that'll be used to cheat you because you won't be familiar with the different types of money. There's 250 euros. One of these is false, one of these is genuine. There's this one false and that one's genuine. In actual fact, it's very hard to tell. But the real test is in the field. This feels like money and this feels like cheap paper. It's important to familiarize yourself with the currency as much as you can before you go. One of the key things you can do to protect yourself is always check all the money you receive carefully, even if you get it from a reputable source, like a bureau de change. You don't know that the person serving you is necessarily as honest as the company hopes they are, or they may innocently be passing you money that they don't know is counterfeit. When on holiday, it doesn't get much better than relaxing in the sun with a drink in your hand except if that drink is free. The hostlers are going to show you how to win drinks from your mates by using proposition bets. The prop bet makes you believe you're onto a sure thing. But of course, the hostlers always have the edge and you don't stand a chance. So watch and learn. Yeah. We'll have a little bet, and we'll use one of these. OK, I'm going to put it just there like that. OK, get some change. I was out busking earlier. Got to avoid. Lots of euros. This is the idea. We are going to place coins on top of the napkin. We're going to take turns. Whoever runs out of room first on the napkin loses. OK. All right? That is on the napkin. That is off the napkin. Okay. All right? You can't nudge other coins out of the way. <laughs> if I catch you doing any of that <laughs> stuff, yeah. you're out of here. <laughs> okay? So, okay. deal? Deal. You know, just in case I don't get my drinks at the end of it. <sighs> okay, do you want to go first? You want me to go first? Where do you want? You can go first. Okay. Uh, uh, we always start by there's a coin in the middle. Yeah. yeah. All right. I'm happy with that. Oh, the tension. Oh, this <laughs> is so too much. The coins have to be touching each other. And relax. No, no. You can put the coin anywhere. You can put it at the edge here. You can put it anywhere. Oh, interesting move. 
I see. I never thought that way. I didn't. Did you pitch now? It's a cloud. See, I think it's going to go up that corner. Controversial, but interesting. Oh. All right, it's on there. Are we happy? Adjudicators, ladies? Yeah, That's so. up from the top. I can see napkin on both sides. Yeah. Great. Okay, That'll do, Pig. Oh, I, can, <laughs> I can see him talking already. They're running out of space. He can be the next one. After this one, he's going to go there. Yeah. It's not going to fit. It's a tight fit. I've got to try. It's not, not going to happen. <laughs> It's all over. It's a fair cop, Governor. Thanks for the round. The trick here is to start with one coin right in the middle of the napkin, no matter who is chosen to go first. Do you want to go first? Do you want me to go first? Where do you want? You can go first. OK. If his opponent goes first, Alex claims there has to be one coin in the middle before the first move. After that, it's just down to symmetry. Alex simply mirrors every move his opponent makes by placing his next coin on the opposite side of the napkin. And because the opponent goes first, he'll also be the first to run out of space and lose. Can I use this to pay for it? No, you can't. <laughs> That's my money. Go away. <laughs> Still to come, the hustlers go clubbing and DJ Toby Anstis is out of the frying pan and into the fire. Oh, oh. Fantastic. Paul's put on his best gear for a day out in central London. He's here to demonstrate a scam that catches out on wary tourists and travellers in major cities around the world. And he's going to do it using nothing more than his sharp suit, a clipboard and a fake staff badge in the Black Cab Con. Good things come to those who wait. Looking for a taxi, folks? OK, where are you going? Marble Arch. Marble Arch. You want the hotel rate? Save you a few pounds. Yeah. It's about 15 of you go, 10 of you get the uh, thing here. Paul apparently works for this hotel which seems to have a discount arrangement with the local taxis. Here, that's £10. You pay me. <laughs> that would be too easy, though, wouldn't it? <laughs> Some people are so cynical. There you go. Make sure you show them that when you get to the other side. That includes his tip, unless he's extra good, in which case... So the flat rate for hotel guests is £10, rather than the more expensive standard rate on the taxi meter. They've paid Paul in advance and just need to give the cab driver the prepaid slip when they reach their destination. All right, there we go, two for Marble Arch. Yeah? Uh, yeah, when you get there, OK? Yeah, thank you. All right, all done. You certainly have been. Of course, there is no arrangement with the black cab. Paul's just made himself £10 in a couple of minutes. And with that rate of return, it's worth sticking around to see if more tourists want to be taken for a ride. You looking for a taxi? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Where are you going? Uh, I think it's called the Moyston Hotel. You came out of this one? Yeah, yeah. OK. Do you want to get the taxi rate? Right? Yeah, I'll Ten pound anywhere in London. Sounds good right. to me. Do you need to yeah. show this to the taxi driver? No worries. OK, and he'll give you another receipt at the other end. All right? Oh, my God. There you go. Uh, that's for you. Same routine, same result. Ten pounds to Paul. Make sure you show them that receipt when you get to the other end. Yeah, well, okay, yeah. All right, going to the Morstan Hotel, uh, 4 Branston Street. Got it? OK. Here you go, gents. Thank you very much for that. All right. Well, cheers, Take care. He could stand here all day collecting tenors. But Paul decides to move his operation to another street before any of the marks make a return journey. Meanwhile, the first set of marks have just reached their destination. I'm supposed to give you that ticket. Eat it. 
You're joking. I've paid to ten pounds for the hotel. Surprise, surprise. The driver has never heard of any prepaid discount scheme. He just wants his fare. Once they'd paid for their journey all over again, we caught up with the Marks to see how they were enjoying their day out. The guy in the suit just stood outside and said, oh, do you, do you want a taxi? And I said, yeah. And he said, if you pay me £10, I'll give you a receipt and um, you don't have to pay him. And I went, but you could just be a man in a suit. And he went, well, not that easy. So we got in the taxi, came here, and the bloke went, no, I don't think so. Look, you've got to pay again. If we want a taxi at home, we know who to use, who's the cheapest and what's Jesus, best. Yeah. But when you come down here and... And you are like a tourist, yeah. then you don't know. You're completely out of your comfort zone, and that's when you can easily get duped. Yeah. In this scam, Paul's very smartly dressed and stood right outside the hotel entrance. So because he looks the part, tourists naturally assume he works for the hotel and trust him. This is a classic, it's too good to be true scam. If you're getting a cab from a hotel, always check that it really has been provided. When you get in the cab, ask the cab driver if he's been paid. If he hasn't, you get out very quickly and you're not going to lose anything, but double check. How are you? Nice to see you. Money won is twice as sweet as money earned. So say goodbye now. And money won from a celebrity is even sweeter. I am on the verge of crying. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Let's we'll see if you can do it. Oh. In the celebrity con games. Hey. This week, the hustlers are going to challenge Heart DJ and former I'm a Celebrity star Toby Anstis. Uh, have you ever been uh, scammed or hustled? No. Never? I think I've ever been hustled, no, never oh, scammed. Not, not that you know of, obviously. No, no, this, this is probably a first, yeah. You're like virgin territory for a scammer, then. Break yeah. me in gently, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, I think we do. Oh. We'll leave you two alone. Yeah, I was going to oh, say. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, we, we do have a challenge for you, and it's kind of like a bar bet, except you wouldn't really do it at the bar, more like a kitchen. Two beautiful non There you go, from the real here. hustle uh, kitchen collection. <laughs> <laughs> Ten pounds is required, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. do you have ten? Yeah. I have the dosh. Oh, oh, fantastic. The dosh goes to the keeper, and the keeper is always dressed. Thank you. Yep, well, you good. know, we'll see. So here's the challenge. All you have to do, you have to place one frying pan onto the other, and you have to do it in such a way that by holding onto just one of the handles, you can turn it around like this, and the other won't fall out. OK? Right. That sounds almost impossible, but Toby's going to give it a go. Right. <clears throat> right, is this doable? It is doable. Oh, yeah, totally. The thing is, you just think, I bet everybody's already seen it at home, and you're like, what a Wally. I can't believe, <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe Toby's not seen that. He's so <laughs> thick. He's <laughs> so <laughs> thick. Like, I can't believe it. I'll bet they haven't seen that. If I toss it, if you, I... Toby throws some ideas at the problem to see what will stick. <laughs> or in this case, non-stick. Can I go from hand to hand, quick? No, you've got to hold it on just one hand. One yeah, hand or one hand. hand. Yeah, yeah. 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 Just there. You know it's going to yeah, go. Yeah, we were like... pondering like that. <laughs> you know it's going to fall out. I just want to hear the big oh, clap. That might work. Oh, no, it didn't. Uh, oh, no, it didn't. Oh, no. What a surprise. <laughs> there you go. If there's a way of doing this, Toby's determined to find it. What about if? Oh. Hmm. <laughs> See, that looks more <laughs> oh. He's not having much luck so far. Away yeah, now. yeah. <laughs> well, that's interesting, but it didn't stay. It did detach at one what? point. What? Close, but that's cheating. So why doesn't that count? Because why you have I to turn them over back? so that it stays inside for a split second. Oh, but that was like separated. literally. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, I don't think I'm going to get it. Toby, Shall do I? you give up? I'm really frustrated, yeah. you know. But I don't think I'm going to get it. Toby can't stand the heat, so he's going to have to get out of the kitchen. Time now for Paul to demonstrate how it's done. Nothing involved but two frying pans. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And he's not bending the rules. What? What? He's bending the frying pans instead. Yes, I'll, I'll hold yeah, yeah. This one No this way. Started. What? Would you like hell? to put that one in there? Let's uh, give that a little start. <laughs> <laughs> put that in there. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> 
We're very pleased. Obviously, today. you know, we do recommend you try this at home with your own pans. Yeah. <laughs> This is why it's called the Real Hustle Range. Uh, <laughs> that is... <laughs> that is off on Yeah, well Come done, bud. Well done. You see, of course, I never thought to ask at the start, do you mind if I break the bloody thing? <laughs> 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 what Toby didn't know was that these are some of the cheapest frying pans money can buy. Using a touch of brute strength, Paul simply rolled both pans up allowing him to wrap one inside the other. He was then able to turn both pans over, holding just one handle. Winning yeah. himself a celebrity tenor in the process. We'll leave you with the frying oh, pans. Oh, brilliant. How am I going to fry um, me eggs in that? Eh? <laughs> it's 8.30 p.m. in Clubland. Dance music fans travel here from around the country to be part of the capital's hippest party scene, looking to let their hair down and spend some cash. Not wanting to miss out, the hustlers are hosting their own night, offering cheap drinks, top DJs and lots of celebrities. This is the Club Night Con. Judging by the noise coming from inside, the party is already in full swing. The doors will be opening shortly to give the public their chance to mingle with the stars already inside. Keeping order out front is Paul as the bouncer. Just be a couple of minutes, everybody, yeah? And here comes the man in charge of the guest list, Alex, as the flamboyant host. Hi, oh, sorry, it's going to be just 10 minutes or something, yeah? Just so we're a bit full at the moment. 10 minutes. The hustlers decide to show the queue a little flash of the glamour inside. Is that one of ours? Here's the convincer. Where have you been? Everyone the other clubbers may not be 100% sure who this particular celebrity is, but it looks an awful lot like Jess. Thank you. <laughs> now Jess is inside, Alex has an idea to get everyone else in as quickly as possible. If I get their payment now and stamp them, then you can let everybody in who's been stamped. All right. Thanks. It's handsome today. Hi right, guys, I'm trying to get you in in about 10 minutes, okay? I'll start from this end, I'm gonna give you all a stamp and I'll take your money now so you don't have to do it in sizes, you don't have to wait. Uh, it's 20 each. That's my thank you. There you go. Thank you. Pay separately, okay. That's you. Do you like it? When I saw it, I said, I have to have that. Hi guys, sorry to keep you waiting. You Alex go? works the queue like a pro. 20 each. Thank you. There we go. Let me in, let me in, let me in. And then heads back inside, having collected hundreds of pounds in cash. But why are the customers so eager to hand over their money? And how did they hear about the club in the first place? To find out, we need to rewind. The club night had plenty of publicity. Because the hustlers had put up posters all around the area and distributed flyers. The offer of cutting edge DJs, celeb guests, and half price drinks made their club night too good to miss. Copy that. OK. OK, just to make sure they're clear, then I'm going to. Is Paul finally about to let the crowd into the party? There's still no sign of Alex, Paul, or the great night out everyone's been waiting for so patiently. And then, the music stops. Yeah, I think there's a few people that are coming out in a minute that said they'll only do that for five nights. Let's 
Eventually, somebody plucks up the courage to cross the velvet rope. Anyone in? Yeah, go on. Is anyone in? What can you say? Yo. Hello. <laughs> Come on, let's just go in and see. There are no celebrities at this party and no DJ. In fact, this is no nightclub at all. <laughs> These clubbers have just paid £20 a head for an empty room with a cheap stereo and some toy disco lights. Here's what the marks didn't see. Three hours earlier, Paul and Alex laid out some cheap red carpet and threw up a rope barrier to make the outside of the club look the part. Thank you. Then later, once Alex had collected the door money, he headed inside to join Jess. Okay, just to make sure they're clear, then I'm gonna... Followed shortly afterwards by Paul. All three hustlers went straight through the empty building, out a back exit, and into their getaway car, along with hundreds of pounds of other people's money. Loads of celebrities in there were coming in and stuff, and then there's a dude with a funny hat, and then 10 minutes later, music's off, everybody's gone inside, and there's nothing. <laughs> I've lost blooming 80 quid. The music just cut and Bounce some strange, win. yeah, we just walk in there and it's it's just an empty room. Do you know what it was? It was because the guy was really friendly, really, like, really kind of friendly camp. and camp. So you think, oh, he's fine, oh, he's got nail varnish, he's a, he's a <laughs> co colourful the character. Glitter as well. The glitter good. on the eyes, yeah, we thought we'd give him 20 quid. Where we see a celebrity turn up as well in the limousine, so we thought, yes, this is the place we want to be. I feel really, Terrible. really angry. I feel <laughs> devastated. <laughs> This scam is all about setting the scene and giving the marks what they expect to see. And a glamorous guest arriving is the perfect convincer. This type of scam happens all over the world and in many different ways. Don't be fooled by publicity or a really flashy front. And certainly don't join a queue just because it looks like it's going to be a good time. This is the Plaza del Obispo in Malaga. Destination for thousands of tourists who come to marvel at the impressive cathedral. Amongst all the tourists today is Paul. He's going to demonstrate one of the classic scams to catch out holidaymakers around the world. He is the helpful stranger. Paul seems to have time on his hands and spots an opportunity to do his good deed of the day for some holidaymakers. You guys want a picture with all of you? So to you. That's what you get for being helpful. Maybe some other tourists would appreciate his kind offer. Do you want a picture? You want a picture together? You want together? Yeah, you don't mind. Yeah, that's all right. Cheers. Nothing better to do. These two guys are keen to have a souvenir photo. Good. Why don't you get one with the uh, thing in the background? With the door, yeah, Santa Jessica. Paul's really taking pride in his photographs. Everyone ignores that and looks at this thing. Oh, why don't you stand just about there? About there's fine. It's great. Sorry. Paul's not happy with the lighting conditions. It's not picking up any light here at all. And then Daylight robbery. She's got your camera. She's got your camera. Yeah, sorry, man. I just turned around. She grabbed it. The whole thing happened too fast for the marks to see, and Paul has suddenly become the prime suspect. I know. She's got it. I mean, check me, pal. I don't have my pocket. I got that. He needs to use all his skills as a con man to talk his way out of the sticky situation. Sure, of course you can. I don't mind. 
they realise Paul really doesn't have their camera. Yeah, did you see your ticket? I got that. A local points out two policemen further down the road and one of the marks heads off to report the theft. I think you should go with him, mate. Yeah, just tell him what happened. I'll wait here. Paul suddenly remembers he needs to be elsewhere. So if he hasn't got the camera, who grabbed it? While Paul was waiting for a mark in the plaza, there were Alex and Jess waiting just around the corner with their scooter engine running. You want to go? Yeah, if you don't mind. Yeah, that's all right. Cheers. Got nothing better to do. For the scam to work, Paul had to manoeuvre the marks across the square. You want to get one over here? Everyone ignores that and looks at this thing. So that he could stand in a pre-arranged spot next to the road. Paul, pretending to have trouble with the camera, was Alex's cue to hit the gas. And that meant Paul could turn towards the road and hold out the camera at the crucial moment. She's got your camera. Jess just had to stick out her hand and grab it. It took all three hustlers working together in perfect sync to pull off the choreographed snatch. We were standing there having a photo done by that um, cathedral. Jason took one of me, then Jason said, you take one of me. And then some crazy man over there said he'd take a photo of us both. I don't know, why we, I don't know why we give him the camera. I didn't, you did. <laughs> I know, that's what I'm saying, yeah, I know. And then he asked us to go in front of that building there. And then the next minute, he said, the camera's gone. A bike, all I see was his bike come past, but it happened too far. I seen him put the land out, and it just straight out of his hand. You know, there's a crowd of people, and you say, oh, do you want me to take a photo of you? That's what you've done. And he just, the camera just disappeared. We've all been in situations where we've been on holiday and we've asked somebody to take a picture for us. We should be very wary if somebody approaches you. Always make sure you keep all your belongings really close to you so that nobody could grab them off you from the streets. And you should avoid carrying expensive items around with you at all costs. Instead, leave them in a hotel safe. Or best of all, don't take them on holiday at all. How are you? Nice to see you. Money won is twice as sweet as money earned. You might as well say goodbye now. And money won from a celebrity is even sweeter. I am on the verge of crying. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. We'll see if you can do it. Oh. In the Celebrity Kong Games. This week, the hustlers are hoping to trip up a 400-metre runner, Olympic and Commonwealth Games athlete, Ewan Thomas. How are you? I'm all right, thank you very much. Yeah? A little bit nervous, obviously anticipating this, but apart from that, life's quite good. Not too bad, yeah? Right. You're still training and you keep very I, fit? I keep fit, yeah. yeah. I mean, my own athletics training, I sort of retired three years ago, but right. I still try and keep a bit buff, you know? Mm -hmm. So That'll come yeah. in handy, actually. For, I will it. It will, for, yeah, because there's a, there's a little challenge. bit of... There's a physical aspect. There's also a mental aspect as well. You, right? Why aren't you saying you used to be a BMX rider as well? I was, yeah, from yeah. the age of nine years old. Have you still got the grip? Because the grip's really important, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, my grip's quite good. Yeah, and I ride a different. motorbike as well, so I've got quite strong. Perfect. You know, these are all glasses, but if we had some bottles... We're going to... We're going to use these. Right, right OK. Two for Mr okay. Paul. Unfortunately, there's a little bit of money involved. OK. How does a tenor sound? Just so happens the tenor's good, because I've got a right. crisp new one here. Ewan's right. got the bottle to accept the wager and puts his money where his mouth is. You're not going to get it back. But well, maybe if I win the bet, I will. Hey, yeah. maybe. Right. Maybe. If... I'm quite competitive, so I keep buying yeah. it. I'm mega competitive. I know. Okay. All right. So here's the idea. Yeah. It's very simple. With one hand, without yeah. using the table, without supporting the bottles in any way, you have to start with the mouth to mouth, just the bottles, not you and yeah. I. <laughs> and uh, you hold them like that. And then you have to end with them, held in the same hand, base to base. Okay? All right. And I can't, one I can't sort of lean them on myself or nothing like that. Want to give so, it a shot? Yeah, of course. Okay. So you start like this. Okay. Mouth oh, to I mouth. Move away. <laughs> okay. I'm struggling just to hold it like that. Right. Okay. Thinking out loud, I, the only way I can imagine doing this, and I don't think I could, would be to drop this one gently, play, gently drop it. Yeah. But then I need it to drop very straight, which it won't, because it will be spinning. 
my initial thing is literally to drop it and then catch using that. That bottle catch the top of that one. If you can do that, you probably should join the circus. Oh, exactly. How would you do it? How would you think? I can't roll, I can't I can't let go basically, you know, as well. Well, you could let go if you want to to some degree, but you're only allowed to use one hand. You can't lay anything on the table. Yeah, you can move the bottle around the floor. with that hand, mm. but you can't use the table or your body. There you go. You okay, there oh, we go. Yeah. And he's off. I need that Spider-Man hands. I mean, you say that. Ah, <laughs> uh, what if you... Hmm. I really want to try harder, but it will drop. It will Look, drop. Do you want to, let's get something try. safe. Yeah. Will a safety net make it any easier? You feel as if you've had a proper cracker. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? Right. And if you break a bottle, don't worry about it. Right, so... Ooh, Ooh. OK. okay. I need to flip that one and catch it. Oh, oh. Hey. Looks like he could be on the home straight. I'm starting to get a little worried. He's actually almost done it. Could this be the first £10 loss for the hustlers? Close one. It was a valiant effort from Ewan, but in the end, the bottle and his chance to beat the hustlers slipped through his fingers. But to win the tenor, Paul still needs to prove that it can actually be done. And the thing is, you were pretty close. Right? Here you go, there's one. Two. Three. Just bring it down. There it is. Just to there. Great. Fair play. Look at that. It's all down to the technique. Try Paul go. gives Ewan the step-by-step -step guide. Tilt this one down like that. Yep. Throw it up and catch it as close to the base as possible. OK? And then move it up so you're holding it between finger and thumb. Yeah? Yeah. And what you do is you kind of relax these fingers and just let it fall down to there, but keep a hold of it. Perfect. Now you come up to there, keep it in position, and then using your fingers, just give it a little slide to run down. So it goes Where's down it? To it there. can't go anywhere. My hand's in the way. There it is. Just to there. Um, I'm giving up. I'll, I'll just watch you do it. All right. I, I, admit you, I admit defeat. It's easy when you know how. A bit of practice, and Ewan will be hustling his own mates with this con. So, that's another celebrity tenor for the Hustlers' bulging coffers. Cheers, guys. Cheers. It wasn't a bad effort, though, was it? Cheers, Paul. Cheers. Still to come, Paul becomes an uninvited hotel guest. Find out what floats Jess's cork. <laughs> and watch the Hustlers put the left into left luggage. Make sure you back it all in there. If you're going on holiday this year and don't want to run into any hustlers, here are some helpful tips to get you on your way. When people go abroad, they're going to need to get around. And for some, that means using taxis. Now, if you're going to use a taxi, make sure it's a fully licensed one. You can ask your hotel to recommend one. You can ask the people you're staying with, ask fellow travellers what taxis they've been using and use the same ones. Remember that in some countries, taxis don't use meters. There's pre-arranged fares for every trip. Now, you need to make sure you know exactly what the fare is going to be before you set off. Now, there is a scam that happens all around the world in taxis. Let's say you've arrived at your destination, the taxi driver asks for 19 euros for the fare. You hand over a 20. In that instant, as he takes it over his shoulder, he will switch it for a lower denomination note, let's say, in this case, a 10. And he will say, well, it's, the fare is 19. Now, either you insist that you've given him a 20, in which case the taxi driver very cleverly replies, yes, but this is all I've got. I haven't got any change. In which case, you just let him off the one euro and he gets a one euro tip. Or you apologise for your mistake and you hand him over another ten, in which case the taxi driver makes a nice little tidy profit. 
So the lesson for this is whenever you're in a foreign country, whether you're buying stuff or paying for services, always make sure you know exactly how much money you're handing over. That way, no one's going to try and pull a fast one. Alex, Paul and Jess are on their way to a busy four-star hotel, temporary home to thousands of commuters and tourists. They're here to demonstrate how determined con artists can separate unwary travellers from their possessions, even when they think they're locked away safe and sound. This is the hotel room rip-off. Paul heads up to the guest floors and lets himself straight into one of the rooms, as if he was a hotel guest, which, of course, he isn't. He takes a moment to install some hidden cameras and then gets to work, ransacking the room. It doesn't take Paul long to track down everything worth stealing, an expensive laptop, a mobile phone, two handbags and a wallet with cash and credit cards. Having taken over £1,000 worth of items, Paul heads straight back to the hotel lobby where he rejoins Alex. What do you think? Lovely. What do you think? Hmm. I thought we'd have some fun. Huh. Yeah. The boys head off to celebrate their haul with a bottle of expensive bubbly. Madame. How are you? And that looks like Jess waiting for them in a cab. Mate, oh, thank you. Oh, that's a good one. So, what was going on? How did Paul walk straight into a stranger's hotel room and straight out with all their stuff? Let's take another look at the hustlers arriving at the hotel. Jess and Paul headed for the lobby, leaving Alex to carry out the first part of the scam with a little help from a sharp suit and a hotel manager badge. He waited near the front exit for some guests to leave the hotel. Oh, hi there. Excuse me, are you hotel guests? Uh, yeah. Has anyone informed you about the security reset we're doing today? No. Uh, uh, basically, we are resetting all the keys on all the floors. Oh, right. So we just need to program, reprogram. Are you a hotel oh, guest okay. as well? This particular hotel guest is actually Jess. If you, if you hand me your key, I'll make sure that it gets reset, because otherwise we're going to do a security reset in about half an hour. Yeah, of course, you get them back from reception. Uh, your uh, room number is? 206. And you're Jess played a crucial role, handing over an old key from another hotel as a convincer. This left the marks with no reason to question Alex's authority. So they gave him their key card and room number two. 502, I'll just hand that back. And uh, your keys will be ready in about half an hour. Half an hour, that's fine. OK. All right, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. It was as simple as that. In less than a minute, Alex had the marked room number and, crucially, their key. And having just left, they'd be gone long enough for Paul to empty the room. 5.02 or 20 minutes. Take me five. And what about the pricey champagne that Alex left the hotel with? That was also courtesy of the marks. Well, can we have the uh, Pierre Jouet, the 99? I'll take it unopened and I'll sign it to my room if I can. Thank you very much. Alex just picked the most expensive vintage on the wine list. Yeah, it's uh, 502. 502? Yes. And charged it to the Mark's room bill. The hotel guests return and head to the front desk to pick up their reprogrammed key. The receptionist is a little confused, but issues a new one. After all, they're genuine hotel guests. They're about to discover a nasty surprise waiting behind the locked door. At least the key works. <laughs> oh, it works. Now it works. Now it works. Let's see if you're like... Have they tidied up the room already? Um... Don't mess about. Don't mess about. Oh, damn. Oh, for God's sake. Don't mess. <gasps> oh, my Anita. God. Shh. 
Where is my laptop? And where is my phone? My oh iPad. God! Can you put it there to charge? Where is my laptop? And my phone? <sighs> call the manager. How do you call the manager? I don't know. I... We've been done. Come on, we're going down to reception. But the hotel manager won't be able to bring back their valuables. They're in the hustler's possession, who by now are long gone. We've only left that stuff in a hotel room that you would expect that's secure. I mean, it's not like high-value jewellery or anything where you need to have it in a security box or anything. It's just the usual it's stuff. your credit cards. I My whole bag's gone. Everything's gone. So it's not just the laptop, but it's not just... You've got all see your credit cards and all your money. Where's my dog? Don't cry. He asked, he said, um, there's a problem with the cards, and to give him the cards and come back in half an hour and they would have sorted it all out. He looked like he worked for the hotel. And the hotel doesn't know nothing about this. We've been done. We've been done. With the right suit and a generic badge, it's surprising just how many people will assume that Alex works for the hotel. But that's what makes this type of scam work. Also, the situation we create with Jess helps to get them to comply. Most people will follow along if someone else agrees rather than stand up for themselves and say no. Whatever you do, don't leave valuable items in your hotel room in the first place. Always put them in a safe or best of all, don't take them on holiday with you at all. Most good hotels put a lot of effort into keeping their guests secure. You've got to play your part. You've got to make sure that if you part with your hotel key card or you give somebody your room number, that you're dealing with a bona fide member of hotel staff. So if you are approached in unusual circumstances for your key card, don't give it up. Go back to reception, ask that person to come with you. If they won't come, there's a fair chance they're a con man. When on holiday, it doesn't get much better than relaxing in the sun with a drink in your hand. Except if that drink is free. The hostlers are going to show you how to win drinks from your mates by using proposition bets. The prop bet makes you believe you're onto a sure thing. But of course, the hostlers always have the edge. And you don't stand a chance. So watch and learn. I will have a gin and tonic, please. Jess is out for a drink in a seaside bar, but she doesn't plan on picking up the tab. Did you study physics at school? You didn't, so you're no good at physics. No. I'm still going to pick you anyway for this. <laughs> okay, because this is actually about physics. I've got a challenge for you. Okay, I've got a glass of water. I've got a cork. I want you to place the cork in the water and make it settle in the centre without touching the edges of the glass. So it has to stay in the centre without going towards side of the glass. You think you can do it? Sounds simple enough? Uh, it's a challenge. I'll have a go. OK. If you can do it, then I'll buy you a drink. And if you can't do it, and I can, then you buy me a drink. No, Shake? Yeah? Think it's fair? No helping if you know Hands it, up. Okay? OK? Hands off the table, boys. Can I help? Sure. No, you can't help. And you can't help. Okay. Between you and me. Something to do with the glasses position. Whatever you think. Whoa, baby, come on. Stay, stay. Oh, it's gone to the edge. You lose. OK, so if I can do it, then you buy me a drink, OK? Fair enough. OK, so what I'm going to do, I didn't say you couldn't use anything. I'm just going to top it up a little bit. Uh, so I see what's happening. I'm just going to top it up a little bit, you know? Yeah, a little bit. How much is a little bit? Come on. Just a little bit. Top it up a little bit. <laughs> little bit. I'm concentrating here, boys. I'm going to slow off the end. Go on, Cole. Go on, Cole. Oh. Oh, no. Take it out, quick. 
These guys have just been hustled by simple science. A floating cork always moves to the highest point of the water. When the glass is half full, the highest point is right at the edge because the water surface is slightly curved. But when the glass is full, the water surface actually bulges outwards, meaning the highest point is right in the center. And that's where the cork will float. It works in all drinks, especially free ones. Do you want me a drink? There you go. You can use that now, can't you? You can do it with all your mates. Jess is in a busy shopping centre promoting a new left luggage facility. And for a limited time only, these lockers are completely free. This is the lockup. With so many people weighed down by bags, it's not long before Jess finds someone to make use of this great offer. Yeah, so you've got quite a few bags with you today. Would you like to use one of our free lockers? Um... You can have one each. Yeah, you're welcome. Put your stuff in there. I don't know if you can shove it all in one, or I'll tell you what, I'm going to give you two lockers. There's yours. Thank you. One for you. There you go. Just make sure you're back before nine. And the other lockers also start filling up. That's a bag of shopping and a backpack. I'll put all in there. Thank you very much. Do you want to That's another bag locked up perfectly safe and secure, not in any danger at all of being stolen by unscrupulous hustlers. Two hours later, the customers start coming back. But instead of finding Jess, they're faced with a big empty space where the lockers and their bags used to be. They head into a nearby shop to ask if they've seen 40 metal lockers vanishing into thin air. And they're not the only ones wondering where all their belongings have gone. Let's take a look at what they didn't see. Just here. This was the mall earlier in the day. Why don't you go just there? You think so? Uh -huh. That'd be nice, yeah. Come on, come on, steal them. In a matter of minutes, this empty corner of the shopping centre was transformed into the hustlers' left luggage facility. All right, cup of tea. Bye-bye. <laughs> Once Jess had collected as many bags, rucksacks and carriers as she could... Do you want, do you want two of them? It was time to call back the hired muscle. Yeah. Ooh, heavy. And as quickly as the seemingly permanent lockers appeared, they were gone. And along with all those bags, went into the back of the hustler's van, never to be seen again. There was a lady down there that was uh, having some lockers there for anybody to put their bags inside. And basically my friend put her bag in there and I was saying, no, I ain't putting my bag in there because I actually come here often. So I've never seen such a thing, so I thought, no way. I think my passport's in there as well, so I really need my bag. Jeez. I just can't believe it. I really can't. Hustlers are always looking for ways to separate you from your belongings. And there's nothing they like better than finding a way to get you to give them your stuff. Anytime you have to leave your luggage in lockers, make sure you're using reputable facilities, like at a train station and an airport. Of course, if you want to be sure about the safety of your belongings, the best way is to keep them with you at all times. Whenever you're invited to part with your valuables, whether it's locking them away or depositing them somewhere, if there is something unfamiliar about what you're being asked to do, don't be afraid to double check. You know, if it means going to a shopping centre and saying, are these cabinets new, are they OK, then do so. Don't be embarrassed about it. It's your money, your goods, your valuables that you're parting with. So just be safe about it.